What's up, people? GNR TV, streaming done right. It has all the channels that you would want. You know, the regular channels, channels from out of state, pay-per-views, sports, the movie channels, porn. It has over 2,000 channels in general. Over 2,000 channels. $20 a month for two devices now. Not one, but two devices for 20 bucks, and you get all that amazing stuff. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, there's no sports right now. There's not really many pay-per-views. Well, guess what? There is sports because UFC is back. And there's pay-per-views because guess what? UFC is back, and the rest of the sports will be back eventually, and it's worth it. This app is freaking amazing. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I've had it for a little over a year now. I'm never going to get rid of it, and I love it. I love it so much. GNR TV, streaming done right. If you don't have it, you need to get it. And enjoy the rest of the show. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmares. Station's How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another exciting episode of Horror Research 30. Today I have two guests, South Jersey Jason, which you guys have seen him plenty of times. South Jersey, how you doing? I am doing pretty good. How you doing tonight? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. And I have another guest who's an, also a cosplayer, Josh. Josh, how's it going, man? Oh, I'm doing awesome tonight. Thank you for having me on. Oh, yeah. Anytime, man. This is going to be a, a fun, weird, wild ride. You can ask. Yeah, me. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> South Jersey Jason's been on here quite a few times with me. And, uh, yeah, it gets a little. It can get it's a little. Been too, it's been too yeah. long. It's been too long since our last recording. I know, man. It's been way too long, which we gotta, yes. we gotta figure that out when we, you know, when we get when we can. Yeah, definitely. But, um, anyway, I'm gonna let you start off, Josh, as far as you know what you do with the cosplaying and what got you into it and all that. So you can go ahead and take the floor. Yeah, um, I got into cosplaying. I mean, I always liked dressing up as a kid, so I I had a lot of horror costumes growing up, but. What really got me into it was my little daughter, Savannah. So my, I, have, I have two older kids that are uh, 11 and 10. They're, they're not even in the horror at all. They watch some horror movies here and there, but they're, like, terrified of it. But my little one, she's four now, and she just, like, she fell in love with horror. That's so awesome. me and her, the one year for Halloween, we did a Michael cosplay. So we went out. I was, the one, I was Michael from 2018, and she was uh, just like a regular H1 Michael. Mm-hmm cosplayed together and she just loved it and just seeing the love that she had for it we went to a, a local convention here in allentown they have it's called um it, actually new jersey horror con owns it it's called the horror sideshow market so we went there and we actually cosplayed as ghost jason both of us and just the the amount of fans that came up to us and taking pictures and it just really like it really got both of us into it and then we met brian and blairstown and we just like, like, we love it. Like she loves watching horror with me. That's like our thing that we have together. And it's, it's a beautiful thing, you know? Mm -hmm. No, that's, that's really cool, man. And I, yeah. I love, I love when I see younger children into horror because you don't see it as much as no, you don't when we were growing up. Like I can speak for myself saying like, I got into horror when I was about between the ages of five and seven. And it would be just following like my older brother around, one of my older brothers right. around, my older cousins, and that's what they would rent, you know, on the weekends. It's a horror movie. And I could watch them with them as long as I didn't wake any you know, don't wake up mom or aunt so and so. Right. We're all gonna get in trouble. And the, just from then on, like even being terrified of these movies on little, I still wanted to go back and watch more. And I just just always wanted more and more and more. And now I mean <laughs> 30 yeah. years later, I made a podcast about it. Yeah. And, like, it's just so crazy, like, how friendly the community is. Like, when you go out 
going to horror conventions and people are just so welcoming, so friendly. So oh friendly. yeah, that's it, it is. It's awesome. You feel like you've known these people forever, but yeah. you just met them for the first time. I mean, it's a they welcome you in and just like we, uh, it's awesome. It really is. And then I, the I love the cosplayers. I love oh yeah yeah of them and with them. And then it's it's so cool when you see the kids there. And yeah. they're dressed up as like a little Jason, a little Freddy, yep. a little Gremlin, or whatever the case may be. And they're not scared at all. Like, the, a lot of uh, the adults will be way more terrified than the children. Which, yeah. Uh, like, this is hilarious. And, and that's definitely how my little one is. She's she's not terrified. She goes up with somebody that's dressed up, wants to take pictures. And, mm -hmm. yeah. And the funny yeah. thing about little kids, what I, what I love, though, is they're little jerks. Kids are jerks. I say this because, like, if a kid sees that you're really scared, they're not going to stop. Like, an adult will be like, okay, you know what? I should probably calm down because this person's, like, really, really terrified. Yeah. Like a con, for example. A kid will just keep doing it, and they're laughing behind their backs and do it. It's where you want to kick them. I'm like, well, <laughs> you got to stop this, man. This guy's really, really terrified. <laughs> I, I love it, though. Like, I love, I love the atmosphere of the cons. I love the atmosphere of just watching a horror movie, meeting the horror fans. It's all, yeah. it's all fun and just amazing. <clears throat> Yeah, because I believe the first time we met, but we didn't really meet. It was more like you just came up and took pictures with the family. Was at the um, the Christmas celebration. Yes, believe, yeah, yeah, in time. December. Yep. Yes, and um, one of my favorite pictures. I remember Savannah just she steals the spotlight, whether she's yeah. in costume or not in costume. And um, there's a picture of the family and I. I think on the canoe, and she's just looking up at me like in awe. You know, and yeah. that was like one of my favorite. And yeah. then. I think surely it was it after that when you guys did the um the local con was it like yeah 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 that was like around February yeah okay we went and to the local con she I mean even though both your costume was awesome I had to say she stole the picture oh yeah know? she <laughs> did yeah everybody <laughs> was had... like is that they couldn't believe it was a little girl they kept saying is that <laughs> the boy I said no that's my daughter yeah <laughs> and she has her little pose you know yep. that she was doing yeah. like the one where you're you're I forget who you were doing a stare off with. I'm not sure if it was a Michael Myers, but yeah, Michael Myers. Intense, yeah. And she's just like, like this, you know? Yeah. yeah she's and like, yeah. Yeah. She, she really gets, yeah, into she really it. gets in the character. Yeah. She, she, she does. I, I mean, I need to hang out with her to get some motivation before I get in the costume. <laughs> and then, you know, um, obviously we saw each other again back this past March. Yeah. That was the Mania weekend. So yeah, you guys went up to Sound. Did you guys go up on the 13th and 14th? Yeah. Yeah, okay. we, yeah, yeah, we were up there that Friday night because I know you were doing your photo shoot. Yes, yeah, at, uh, yeah. At the comic place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We went up there that Friday night, and that's when we got pictures, and I dressed yeah. my part eight, and yeah. Then we came back then Saturday. Yes, so, yeah, and yeah. we have the best photo, which I have hanging in my office at work, is the one where, where we're hugging each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is, like, my favorite photo. And um, I just remember just how fun she made my day when we were yeah. doing the photo shoots and how great of a trooper she was yeah like she listened very well as far as like taking directions for the photo yeah i know yeah and and when we did the video with jonathan where um we're at the cemetery and you and i are like this yeah and he's walking in and we separate and she comes out and she's like naughty 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 yeah. like that yeah um, that was cool man. and then of course you know when we went down the street into hope and yeah. poor little girl had to go to bathroom so bad and <laughs> i know i know um, yeah we he, couldn't find a bathroom never, yeah he, he never complained though no, you know no. and it was great that we're having fun and then you know your wife has someone to you know talk to while the kids are playing right yeah say, you know um but yeah it, that was a fun weekend and um that was your first time wearing your new part eight, correct? Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah I wore it that Friday, the yeah. 13th. And then I wore it that Saturday. Yeah. Cause I wanted to, de to debut it at monster mania, but then they mm. came. So then I thought, well, Hey, I'm going to debut it Friday the 13th. So do you want to um, talk about who helped you with the design of the costume? Yeah, I actually, I reached out to James from J three costumes. So he designed my part eight. I got the hockey mask by, um, Crystal Lake Industries. He was actually on uh, Camp Blood Radio. So that's how I found out about him because he actually had the accurate screen model of the Part 8. So I was like, oh, well, that would be an awesome way to go. So yeah. I got the Part 8 from him and then the, the clothes from J3. And then the boots I did myself. I actually just weathered them up with some silicone to make them look wet. 
so that way everything looked wet because I didn't want to have dry looking boots. I thought that would look <laughs> fun. So yeah. I wanted to make sure everything was wet looking like I just got out of the lake. So and I actually got my fire axe off of Etsy and I did some modifications with that because it actually arrived. I think I told you, Brian, about that. It actually arrived. It wasn't that great looking. Yeah, so yeah. And it took, stripped some paint off of it and at the red tip on the end and, you know, made it more bloodier looking. So, and so your first some custom, things my it, own and your, your first Jason, was it ghost Jason that you did before part eight? Yeah. Well, actually my first Jason cosplay, I did a part six, believe it or not. I okay. did. I did that about three years ago for a Halloween. I actually still have my part six mask. I got it from escape theory studios. Okay. Hood at the time, I think I had a, a um, it was an Escape Theory Studios also hood. So I did a little bit of a, my own redemption of Part 8. I actually did the clothes myself. I actually watched um, SD Costume Guy. Yeah, yep, yep. YouTube videos, so I followed yep. what he did. So now actually right now I'm in the process of doing another Part 6. So I actually ordered a silicone hood from Kyle Hukulak. Oh, nice. And that coming in nice. in about the next month. So and then, and then I have um RFX designs doing the clothing. So nice. Okay, awesome. You're doing part six yeah. again. Yeah. My dream is to get a silicone hood one day. Yeah. But I have to I have I mean the price, you know, obviously it's I know they're higher. pricey, but I was yeah. like, uh that that was like so, one of my dream masks. I was like, I'm yeah. just I'm doing it. So with me, I have if I'm gonna get get a silicone, I would have to decide which look i'm going for yes yeah. you know i i can't buy a silicone for all my yeah. my costumes um but dave brown um for his name was jason got his silicone from from kyle and when we um shot a little teaser scene um i helped him put it on and let me tell you it looked awesome um yeah like the hair's real like and when i saw face to face I was just like, ah, uh, yeah. this is not going to break on Yeah, screen. Kyle definitely does amazing work. I mean, he can. I think he's, like, the best in the, out there. Oh, right yeah. Hoods yeah. And, I, yeah. Wish he, I wish he would, like, because um, he has an Instagram page, but I wish he would have, like, a Facebook page. A little bit more, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, some, some artists just, you know, just shoot the pictures and that's it. But I just wish there was a little bit more to it. Like, make a video right. of you doing yeah. it or something if that'd be pretty cool but yeah that would be cool yeah i'm always yes. interested to see how they make them and the yes. painting process yeah and dave um for the other film we're working on it's silicone um but it's not from kyle and it was probably half the price of what kyle would charge but okay. it still looks great you know yeah. uh, and you can use it for a part three a part four you know um, yeah that's always good yeah 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 so um so Probably a couple months ago, you got your gloves for Ghost Jason, right? Was it you got the new gloves? Yeah, yeah, I got them yeah. from a new kind of fear. So he made my Ghost Jason hood, and then I decided to do the gloves. Because at the time, I was just, I had like a cheap pair of monster gloves that I painted, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. gray to match the hood. And it just, they, they didn't really look right, like, especially if you had detailed photographs of it. Yeah, yeah. Reached out to um, a new kind of fear, and then I just asked him if he can make them up ghost jason style and okay um, and that's how, how, do they, how do they how do they fit like, are they a good they fit good or? yeah yeah they fit yeah. good yeah yeah do you, do you put in like um talcum powder or anything yeah um, you have so. to yeah because if you put them on dry they they, they they're a bitch to get on uh, okay so they put yeah. some powder in them and they slip right on and then yeah because um that's the new thing that ingram's doing he's making full gloves now so yeah seven so um I will be getting my own gloves eventually. You're like, yeah, you got to put the talking powder in it, you know? Yeah, so, you have to. Yeah, or else yeah. they're not going on, man. They're tough. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited to uh, get them eventually. And, and yeah, that'll, that'll be probably, good. Yeah, because I can't wait to, um, you know, like I said, I, we'll get more into it. But I'll have a new look for my part seven for, like, you know, Halloween time, I'm thinking. Um, yeah. So you've done the Jason. Um, yep. Yeah, you do Michael Myers, and I, you just – now, you have – we saw the images in the background. You have um, the part two, Michael, correct? If I'm, I don't yes. know if on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but you do cosplay as, like, the original OG, Michael? Or yeah, you know, I do. I do have an original OG uh, mask. I usually just leave it on display because it's more expensive, so I try not to wear it too much. Okay. But I, 
personally like I like I'm a big fan of Rob Zombie movies. I have, uh, you know, like I'm like I'm really big in the House of a Thousand Corpse. I actually got Captain Spaulding tattooed on my leg. So oh, nice. Really, okay. I really, I know a lot of people bash on his Halloweens, but I I really enjoyed them, and I I well, always, I always I, like the hobo look. So I, yeah, and I a lot of people do. You yeah, know, when you talk to a lot of people about the zombie films, they like the hobo look. I too like the hobo look. Yeah, I, I like it because it's different. You know, yeah. it, it, that movie was so out there. It wasn't like every other Halloween. It was just like um, and we actually different. we actually had this conversation on our last episode that we recorded with Marissa about yeah. zombies Halloween too. The first like ten fifteen minutes captivated you because it was kind of just yeah it had kind of like that H two feel from nineteen yes. yeah eighty one yeah but it just went all the way to the yeah. right and it lost me there yeah I, I I didn't like I get the PTSD that they were um, showing that Lori had. I didn't like yeah. how they just turned her character into this totally different person. Um, and then the white horse. <laughs> yeah. I didn't really like the whole white horse thing. I think they could have did without that, but I, 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 I Tyler like, main, Tyler main's a beast uh, and Michael. So he, have uh, you, have you met him in person at a convention? I've seen him. I've never went up to him, though, but yeah, I've seen I him. I met him. He is. He's a my, big dude. I, I met him at my first, um, monster mania convention um and um he still had his long hair he's not bald and he's not doing oh, okay. uh, he's not doing he wasn't doing movies of john cena yeah so <laughs> which ah oh, tyler tyler don't do kid movies come on um so i went up to him cool dude and i yeah. said how tall are you he's like six eight i'm like Gee. you know i'm like looking up at him you yeah know? because i remember when i met chris weber uh nfl or um nba player uh, I was working at a gym and he came in to work out. I literally came up to his elbow. You know, wow. that's how tall the dude was. So um, I, I said, one thing I wish I had a couple more inches on me, you know? Yeah. Um, but like, you know, standing next to CJ, um, you definitely feel it, it's like menacing, but he's a nice guy, you know? Yeah. Um, Kane Hodder, like he's six two. I don't feel so short next to him yeah but, yeah, yeah i met him kane hodder i didn't feel too short next to him yeah uh ken krinzinger yeah i felt short you know jason brooks is actually taller than cj graham really he's, one, he's got one inch on cj okay i felt invinced to saying he's tall you know yeah so i think i gotta bring like a portable step stool uh, <laughs> <laughs> i gotta keep up that image so um so you do the hobo michael myers um yeah now have you done any other um cosplays Oh, uh, it's just been really pretty much Michael and Jason right now. I don't know if I really have any interest in doing anything else right now. Like, right, okay. let's try you have, part six. You have the built for like a leather face. You know? Yeah, I thought about leather face, but then that, that was like where I was in the mix up of either between him or Hobo. But I've okay. just been a real Halloween fan. I mean, Halloween and Friday the 13th are my okay. franchises. So. So, um, if you were to do a Leatherface, which incarnation would you cosplay as? I'd probably do the remake. I yeah, that film, the two thousand three. Yeah, that was, when that, that was, came out, that, that that look was awesome, and just yeah, he did an awesome job. That's yeah, I actually, when I first watched the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I was probably a junior in high school, and yeah. the scene that. There's two scenes that really stood out that made my blood pressure go up, and was when you first saw Leatherface come out and hit the guy, and then yeah. when you, and Franklin and Sally are in the woods, and he comes out and guts Franklin on the know? wheelchair. Yeah, yeah. That, was, yeah. that was awesome. And and you know, um, when I watched the remake, I had that same feeling all over. Yes, again. yeah, that you know? remake that was really good. Out of a lot of remakes, I, that stands out to me. Oh hell yeah, that's, yeah, that's easily. Top three remakes. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. I actually um, was having a conversation with my friend Sean Telepo, um, who you might have met. I don't think you met him yet, but he um, he's a fixture in Blairstown when they have their events. Really cool guy. His okay. favorite franchise um, is Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So we, were, we got together a couple of weeks ago, and we went hiking down by me. So we were talking about the franchise. I, I know the franchise, but I don't know it like Friday the 13th. So right. we were talking about each movie. I like the original. I can't stand part two. Yeah. I like Leatherface part three. 
Um, and then they made New Generation with Matthew McConaughey and Renee Zellweger, which was garbage. Yeah, that was, yeah. That was. <laughs> um, and then what do we have after that? Um, we had the remake. And yep. then we had then the another remake. remake. Yeah. <laughs> and then we had the god awful 3D. Yeah. Um, and then which, uh, Leatherface, the newer one. And you know what? I want to go back and watch that because I watched yeah, it. Yeah, I do too. Movie. Yeah, I saw that once too. And that's it. I didn't put two and two together, but he's like, you realize the characters in that film were like um, the hitchhiker, um, the the cook, and you know, obviously Leatherface. I'm like, what? Because it was so bad, I didn't care. Yeah. I just didn't care. So I want to go back. You weren't paying attention to who they yes. were. Yeah, I'm on my cell phone because I'm just yeah. it's it's back uh, filter for me. I mean, but cool to say that about it being bad because I really enjoyed that one, the Leatherface uh. one. The most recent, yeah, the most recent one. Yeah, I, I haven't, I seen it one time like you guys did, but I enjoyed it. I, I do need to go back and watch it again though. I'm yeah. not nowhere near the original. It was nowhere near the remake, of course. I don't yeah, think any of them touch those two, but I had, a, I had a good time with it. What really pissed me off about the 3D one was the timeline. Yeah, that timeline was so. It was supposed to be like almost like a sequel to the first, but like thir- right and yeah, yeah. thirty five, forty years later, yeah. whatever. So that would be oh gosh, early two thousands if it's thir- just if it's um thirty years later. So yeah. like yeah, oh, I don't even want to get into it because I had this. <laughs> and then it was her cousin, and yeah, it was yeah. just really weird. Yeah, that line when he she said when she she was like, "Do your thing, cuz or whatever." Oh, yeah. Yeah, if she one. wasn't so hot, I probably would have turned it off. I'd yeah, she was. She was pretty hot. Yeah, yeah I'll um, to her. Yeah, Alexandra, I enjoyed watching her. And the Dar- I went, the I, went that in, um, I went to go see that in theaters, so I couldn't turn. I couldn't turn. I saw it in theaters. Irene went to go get her nails done, and I went to the movie theaters. I should have went and got my nails done with her. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it'd have been funny though if you do how to like say if you worked at a theater or whatever, you had to turn the movie off. You like, oh, this shit sucks. I'll be right back. Just. Hit a switch, turn it off. Put, put yeah. something completely different on. Like, you know, we're having that difficulty. Let's 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 put something good. Yeah, that movie yeah. Bad. It it was bad. But you know what though, I would be the one to go back and watch it if I couldn't find anything to watch on TV. And yeah, maybe it was on whatever channel. You know, because um, I am a lover of horror, and, and like, um, even though like out of all like the, the Friday Thirteenth films, Freddy vs. Jason is my least favorite, and. I'll just go back to watch it because it's horror. I do enjoy it, you know. Yeah. And I'll pick it apart and everything. Um, have you have you have you done a review of Freddy vs. Jason yet, sir? Or not yet? No, not yet. Because what which yeah. one did we, what we, blah, 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 wow what one did we do last? Me, you, and uh, Taz. Oh gosh. Um. Because I know we bounced around. Like we didn't start. We yeah. We all. bounced around. Bounced we started around. with two and we. Have, I want to say. I think part six or part seven. We we didn't. I know we didn't do part seven yet. Okay. Maybe we did six. Okay. Maybe we did six then. I gotta check. Yeah, I guess we because we didn't do Manhattan. We didn't do Jason Goes to Hell or Jason X. So and we didn't. Yeah. Do, we have to go back and do. I think we have to do part one and then seven through the rest. <laughs> All right. So, so that <laughs> uh, part one we'll have like it'll be like, it'll be not a three hour podcast. It's going to be like a six hour podcast because you know how yeah when we record we just. You know, no, no, we no. just we just get into it. We kind of go off track, you know. Um, part so, five. Part five. That was a fun. That was a fun episode. That that was a good one. You know, um, there's a uh, cosplayer that we know who is a big Roy fan, and he oh, made yeah. a fan film, and he has Reggie in it. Do you want to be Reggie in his fan film? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where does he? Where is he doing this fan film at? Well, he's it's he's got the story, but he lives in Pennsylvania. Ah. You're but, talking um, about Jonathan, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, his he loves Part Five. He oh yeah, really, he does. He does a really good Roy cosplay, and he actually did a Ghost Roy cosplay, which he did at Blairstown on the 14th. So um, I'll send you those pics. It was really good. Um, all right, so getting back to the Halloween, the original lineup. Uh-huh. What, what? Other than the first one, what, what uh, is your favorite, Josh? Well, the first one I probably ever seen as a kid was the Curse of Michael Myers. That that always stood out to me. I liked how okay. brutal it was in that. 
So yes. that was like one of the first ones I watched in the early 90s. So that's what made me like go back and revisit all the Halloweens, and I just fell in love with the franchise. Yeah, per Curse definitely stands out to me, and I actually have the mask of the curse, and I oh, nice. how brutal he was in that. Yeah, that was the first one I saw in theaters. Yeah. I was a sophomore when that came out. The only reason I remember that, I, I was on a date with a freshman, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that's another story for another day. Um, it was, and I remember because back in the day, I don't know if you guys remember this because you're a little bit younger than me. Do you remember when they used to have the, the um, horror, like, Oscars? It would come on yeah. like in syndication, yeah. And I remember they released a, a trailer for it, and I'm like, "What?" You know, because it's been you know up to that time. It was uh, seven, eight years since Part Five. So yeah. I went, I watched it. Yeah, it was it was good. Mm -hmm. um, I think I like the producer's cut better than the theatrical cut. Yeah. Um, so when I had my Halloween marathon. I had the box set and then I have the, um, the I think I had the producer's cut in a single edition. I will watch the theatrical part six and then watch the producers after that. But I remember, you know, before DVDs came out, I had the bootleg producers cut on VHS. You know, I got it off of nice. eBay or, or somewhere where I was at. Um, so um, part six of so part six is like your, your favorite of the, the original lineup or well, I would say the original is my favorite, but well, that other was... other than the original, like what is a, a like a favorite of yours? I would put Rob Zombie's Halloween One before Part Six. Okay, in my lineup, yeah, because I really enjoyed Rob Zombie's take on Halloween, and um, and besides the new one too, I really like uh the you know the new 2018 one that was yeah. Good. I got so, a, I, I got a question for both of you. Seeing as I was speaking yeah. of Halloween, which is the worst? Oh, you already know my uh, resurrection. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's mine is a toss up, honestly, between resurrection and Rob Zombie's part two. Like I think both of them, and I own all of them because I have a box set of it too. Yeah, I probably watched them both like maybe twice, maybe once or twice, and it's just like those two are just easy to skip. It's like yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna do a mar a Halloween marathon, but I'm not watching these two. They, yeah, 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 you take that one out. Yep. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, because actually, we had a conversation on this last time I was on. Joe Gal and I got into an argument because he said Resurrection was better than Part Six, and I was like, "The hell it is!" Yeah, no, <laughs> no, yeah, that, well, that was terrible. It was. I don't know what the fuck they were doing with that. Like, I don't. No. But you know, it was. It was in a. T it was at a time when, um, I guess that POV was cool for the time, you know, because it came out two thousand. Two, I think. Two, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. The only reason I remember that is because uh, when I lived down in the Atlantic City area, uh, they had SmackDown and Buster Rhymes was like the special guest and he had just got done filming um, Halloween and he was promoting it, you know? So, but when he's doing the, Whoa! Yeah. You know, I was just like, and I don't like Tyra. The only movie I like Tyra Banks in is Higher Learning. Other than that, I can't stand her. Not so, yet. Um, you know, I just, uh, I can't, yeah. So I I, that's a very good. I'm not a big fan of putting big name people in horror movies to an extent. Like I didn't, I'll be honest though. I didn't mind LL Cool J in, um, actually in the Halloween movie he was in and I didn't mind him. H2O. In, yeah. I didn't yeah. mind him H2O and I didn't mind him in, uh, what the fuck? I, I just talked about this movie yesterday too. What's the shark movie? Oh, Deep Blue Sea. Yeah, he was awesome. I, <laughs> although the one scene, he killed a shark because you ate my bird, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. A cheesy one-liner. And uh, But you know what, though? LL had up to, like, you know, the Deep Blue Sea. He was in, he was in the industry for, what, 20 years? So he was well-known. He was seasoned. Yeah. You know, Busta, like, you know, I... He was probably in the scene for 10, 15 years, but really didn't have a lot of experience acting. Like, I act other, than, other than, I mean, he had that small role in higher learning. I don't know if he did anything in between, but that was also the time frame when they were putting different rappers in different movies. You know, yeah. that was a cool thing to do. But the, like, thing, uh, the thing with that, though, is like, 
for the most part, when they put when rappers were in movies, they were in movies that worked. Like DMX was in a lot of movies that were awesome. Yeah, like DMX was in that one good. Uh, what was it, Jet Li movie? I can't think of the name. Exit was it Jet Li. Yeah, I, I think I think I think it was Exit Wounds, but I think they did a couple. Yeah, of together. yeah. Like DMX was good. Like, um, but but, uh, but for like a horror movie, I'm just like, come, don't don't do this, man. Put yeah. I'd I'd rather honestly, I'd rather see. I like it when it, now I don't want to call people a known name because I feel like I don't want to be disrespectful, but you know what I mean? Someone, an, an unknown person in a horror movie. Yes. Yes. Because I, I hate even more than when they put a rapper in a horror movie. I hate even more when they put like an A-list actor or like a quote unquote pretty boy actor, which I'm getting sick and tired of that bullshit. <laughs> Why in a second? But uh, like, for example, not a bad show at all. Pretty good. It's actually a good show. Supernatural. When they put him yeah. in. The Friday the Thirteenth film. I was like, he's not gonna die. He's not gonna oh, die. Yeah. The only reason yeah. I play him in this movie is for women to come to this movie. Stop doing that. Stop putting pretty boys, and you don't have to put. You don't even have oh, to put hold on. I, I I have a thing for uh, like uh, Jared Padalecki. <laughs> yes, he is a handsome looking guy, and I did like him in uh, the the reboot. <laughs> I, I did like him. In it. I mean, he wasn't terrible in it, but it was just like the one thing I did not like. They gave him a motorcycle that was too small for him. It was like he was riding a moped. You know, the guy's like six yeah. five, and he has this tiny motorcycle that like irked me. But, but th it's funny that you brought up the reboot because um, I belong to a Facebook group called Friday uh, Friday Thirteenth Everything Jason, and there was this young kid. He had to be late teens, early twenties, and he wrote a post that he he listed like ten facts as why the reboot is the best Jason movie ever, right? I think I seen that the other that was like a week ago. That was within Yes. And I think it was like he, I don't know if he was just trying to troll for, for people to comment. <laughs> and the thing that irritated a couple of people was he oh. said, I don't mean yes, old. And I said, I'm insulted that you said um what was it? I forget that it was like the best movie and I listed my things. I said because he said it had a stellar cast. And I said, that cast was the most stereotypical casting ever, yes. you know? And they, yeah. they, made, they made it clear, especially with, um, oh gosh, the guy that was the friend um, who was shooting the boot. And he was like, um, he says, I'm, I'm working on something. I'm doing music. Uh, yeah. And she's like, oh, what is it, rap? Oh, because I'm black. You think I'm doing rap? You know, like. That's stereotypical yeah. casting right there. Um, and then, you know, Trent, I cannot, Trent was the worst. Um, mm -hmm. Every every character except for, I forget her name with the stupendous, you know, she was my favorite. I can't think of Jenna, I think her name was. Um, <laughs> um, I, 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 I like Clay. I liked um, the girl that played, who we thought was going to be the final girl. Mm -hmm. But, you know, ended up not being a final girl because that was a good twist right there, you know? Yeah. And his sister, Whitney, was okay. The rest of the cast was horrible. I did like the drunken hillbilly, you know, that was, like, going to make out with the mannequin. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, that was good. <laughs> I mean, the first 15 minutes of that film was great, although some of the ca actors... I didn't care for, especially the woman with the horrible breast implants. Like, uh, uh, that was we, horrible. We, we can't complain about women's bodies. We're, we're, we're past that now. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. They were, it, it looked like she just came off of the oper operating room table. You know, they but, were just. It, so but, but really quick, you wouldn't have closed your eyes if she took them out for the whole movie. No, oh, no, not at all. No, no. <laughs> so. so the only good thing, like, like, really, the reboot had, I mean, there are some pluses. Derek Mears brought a whole new incarnation. Yeah, he, he did a good Jason. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, he brought, they brought back, like, the, the rural uh, Jason in the woods. Yeah. Um, and the look of Jason, I really liked that look. Um, I didn't like the machete. It was a little bit too big. Mm -hmm. But overall, it was a decent film that I would I would watch you know, you know, more often, you know, like whenever, you know, I wouldn't yeah. turn it off. It's on. Um, I just wish we got one more with Derek Mears, you know? Yeah. I got two things to say about that. 
one, I agree. I wish we got another one with Derek Mears, but I wish that this one, even if they use the same cast, was just more serious and darker. Like, I, I think, I know that in damn near every horror movie, you can find some humor in it. Friday the 13th series, there's some humor in it, but this one, I felt like there was too much humor in it throughout the whole freaking movie. And with other, you know, with the original Jason Friday the 13th movies, you'd get it here and there, bits and pieces, with like one or two characters. But this was like the whole cast trying to be funny. Right. And that really bothered me with this movie because I'm like, this isn't Nightmare on Elm Street. This isn't Leprechaun. This is fucking Jason. It's like, yeah. a little, you know, have your jokey moments here and there, but not like throughout the whole damn film. You got something. And I'm just like, this is, I enjoyed the film. Don't get me wrong. I went and see it. As a matter of fact, I think I went to see it back to back weekend. And it was, one, I feel like it was just because it was been fucking years since the Friday the 13th film came out. Yeah. And two, it was just the adrenaline. Like, I re- like I said, I really did enjoy it, but then after, like, going over it again, watching it again, I'm like, okay, here's my other issue. Here's my issues with it. My other issue, and it's, it's- besides the jokiness, was I'd rather they had it set in the 80s instead of, like, yeah. oh, two, it came out in 2009, so in the early, you know, the, instead of that time, it just, it just didn't work for me. I'm like, if you had it set in the 80s, you can still have it campy. You can still have it cheesy, of course. You can make it look better than the eight, than the original one as far as because it's better technology. And you could even have it so you had the first three films, you know, kind of in that one film. That's fine. That's all fine and dandy. But it's like, take it more serious, based in the 80s, and that's pretty much it. I mean, you're going to have your stereotypical jokes and all that corny stuff all the, t- all the time with these movies, man. But I just feel they could have just just those couple of things they could have did just to tweak it better, and they they really didn't. I'm not gonna say that it was horrible because it definitely wasn't horrible, mm-hmm. and it definitely wasn't my least favorite. It wasn't one. Of, it wasn't the worst ones, but it's on the bottom end of if I were. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. Totally agree. Um, you know, it's it's actually that came out within like a 30 day period of um, my bloody Valentine 3D. Uh, came out like a month before and that starred um, Jared Padalecki's counterpart in Supernatural, um, Jensen Ankles. And um, that movie was a letdown too. One, it was written by the guy who wrote Jason X and uh, he also, I don't have, I don't, I don't really have a love for Todd Farmer um, and he Stop writing yourself in your movies if you can't act too. You know, <laughs> my opinion. You know, I sorry for all the Todd Farmer fans, but um, you had two. You had two good franchises come out within a month of each other, having the same stars from the same TV show. I don't know if it was done that way to kind of boost it, um, but Jen, uh, Jared Padalecki was cast in the better of the two franchise movies. Um, so getting back to cosplay, I was just thinking about it when we were talking. Uh, do you have any um, ideas for Savannah for future costumes for her? Yeah, uh, she wants to do. Uh, we're working on a part three for her. So okay, part three mask. So I'm gonna try to get her the rest of the outfit, so that way she nice. gets a jacket and everything. So she nice. likes part three. She always asks me, Dad, can we watch part three? <laughs> So yeah, like that's you me should, and her thing. You should get a little. You should get her a little mini spear gun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know. That'd be cool to try to find that. Yeah. yeah. You know, the one thing also I remembered about our our time together was when she would get her camera, her phone out to take pictures. Yeah, take pictures. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you know, yep. and she was a good photographer. She actually, she actually has me. She took a picture of me that Friday night on the thirteenth, and my. Okay. And she has me as her wallpaper. So I always say to her, I say, who's that guy? She's like, that's you. And I said, all right. Nice. Yeah. Oh, my wife joined me. What's up, wife? Nothing. You want to have- Packing for tomorrow. See, they, they, hey. won't, be able to, they won't be able to hear you because no. of that. Nobody so can hear her. Can yeah, hear they can, yeah, I mean, but she can't. I'm sorry. She can't hear you guys. Here, take over for a little bit. Oh, no. Hello. Hello. How you doing? <laughs> What's up, guys? What's up? Having a Not great time. Not much. Awesome. Yes. I'm packing for tomorrow. We have a busy weekend ahead. Yeah. I got to work tomorrow. Yeah. How, how often does South Jersey Jason get on your nerves? At least once a day. Oh, you're doing At least once a day. That's a husband's job. At least. That's right. And he does it so well. 
He does it so well. I agree with whatever you're talking about. I will, say, gonna... I will say this. We don't always do it on purpose like you guys think we do. Sometimes we just say good morning. And go, what do you mean? <laughs> yep, yep. Hey, I'm right there, too. That's true. Yeah. I, I think I need oh, subtitles no. or something. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, here's my husband, Josh. I'll see you this weekend. Yep, we'll see ya. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. All right. We still have to do a podcast with the women of the, um, you know, uh, Aaron, how we were talking about, like, having them on for a little bit and talking about what it's like to live with a hard sex person. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure my wife would have a lot to say about me. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good, I just got myself a good uh, idea for a new weekly blog. Let's talk about the, the other half of the cosplayers. I got to think of some questions. That's all, all right. right. <laughs> I, like, I, I like that idea. And it, it yeah. works. I mean, if there is a way you get to get them on here and talk about it on the show, that'd be cool as well. I know my wife won't ever come on the show, but she's also a horror freak, fanatic. Why won't she come on the show? Is she camera shy or? It's, I don't know. It's just, I guess it's not her thing. Like, okay. The one thing was actually back in um, February. Yeah, February. We went. We were supposed to be going to a con, which I'm not going to mention the can't. Con's lame. Fuck that con because uh, uh, we talked about it off air. Yep. I'll tell you guys the name again after. As a matter of fact, no, I'm going to say it. Wicked weekend. Don't, don't, don't go to that place. Don't sign up for it because it, it's going to end up being a scam. We did get our money back, but it was it, like they had so many awesome guests that were supposedly supposed to be going. Make a long story short, I was supposed to be going to that con. I had a table. I paid. We paid. I had a table already, and then we paid for VIP. So you can like you know. Do the VIP parties and get into like all every single panel, and she was actually going to record with me that weekend, like here and there, because I was going to have with you know at my table, I bring my equipment, and she was going to come. She's like, if you don't, you know, there's times, if there's downtimes where you're at your table and there's nobody on, I'll come and chat a little bit. So that's how she was going to be on. But as far as like being on an episode, episode, she's just not really. She's she's more of a behind the scenes person. Like she likes to. As far as when you go to the cons, for example, she likes to be the one that sets the table up and decorate the table all nice and neat. She doesn't trust me or my brother to do it. <laughs> she likes to, like, my horror thing, like, when I get, you know, like I said, when I get, when we do eventually get a house and stuff, she'll want to set the room up. Like, set up yeah. the room and make it all nice. All right. I have to do my electronics part and my green screen part, but she'll want to do, like, everything else. And I just let her go ahead and do it. Like, because I'm, I mean, the way I'm going to do it is going to be, I'm not going to say it's not going to look cool or neat. But I'm not going to take as much time with it because I'm one. I hate decorating. I don't even care if it's my horror stuff or not. <laughs> She's like, this shit's taking too long, and that's like one of her hobbies. Like this, she just loves to do that. So I'm like, okay, you go ahead. And I do I don't mind like decorating like well only in my room. What I hate is when I have to dust. You know, yeah, as yeah. I'm sure you got like I think you got a, you got a lot of stuff because you're in a basement, right, Josh? Yeah, 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 I have a fixed up basement, so yeah, it's uh, my figures get a lot of dust, and yeah. yeah. So, um, speaking of figures, let's talk about yeah. what's behind you. You got an awesome art um, display. Um, oh yeah. So, uh, um, have you ever now? Is that like a, a latex mask, or is it just a bust on a mannequin? Yeah, that's actually a Tots uh, Trick or Treat Studios mask. I got the whole okay. costume from Trick or Treat Studio, so it's the costume and the mask. And then what I did with the latex mask is, is I cut the eyes out. So okay. it was already pre in it, but it didn't look right on the mannequin. So I cut actually the eyeballs out, so that way you see the mannequin's eyes, so it looks more official. I like. Yeah, that. and I know that's um, that's probably like Megan's least favorite of your. Oh, she hates. <laughs> yeah, she hates Art the Clown. Really? She watched a little bit of that movie with me, and she was just like, Megan hates horror to begin with. Like, she gets terrified. Her first horror movie with me was the first Jeepers Creepers. Ooh. Okay. We were dating around okay, that time, one. and I, I rented it from Blockbuster, and she was like, I was like, hey, watch this with me. You know, I didn't know what to expect either, but I was always in the horror. So mm -hmm. she watched that with me, and she was just like terrified of the Creeper. So I always tease hey, her. Hey. I'm going to get the whole mannequin and dress it up and have it in her room and she's like That's nice. no we won't <laughs> i i wish irene was scared like that like freddy krueger creeps her out like but yeah. not to the fact of like art does for megan yeah I, I i irene has no fear basically actually i'll i'll, I'll let it be known um oh. every every once in a while we might have weird things happen in our, our house 
Yeah. In the middle of the night, and I'll make her go investigate and see what it is. <laughs> <laughs> like, you go get it, honey. You got it. Behind under the bed, did you get it? Yeah, see, see, oh, here's, see the, it? <laughs> here's the thing um, horror movies, slashers don't scare me, it's what you can't <laughs> see that freaks yeah. me out, you know. Yeah. So, so uh, what you're pretty much come. saying is your wife is your bodyguard and she protects you. Uh, hold on, repeat that question for her. What was the question? Said, what you're basically saying is your wife is your bodyguard and she protects you. That's yeah. right, yeah, <laughs> it's good. I'm a Jersey girl. We don't play around. Hey, we all need them. That's right. <laughs> and she's a South Jersey girl. South Jersey. Yes. Uh -huh. I can bury you in the Pine Barrens and be in an Atlantic City party later. <laughs> you better be at your P's and Q's then. That's yeah. right. Yes, yeah. she keeps me in line. That's right. I know people. I'm Italian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Forget about it. I know a guy. <laughs> okay. All right. I gotta go pack now. <laughs> Okay. Um. So well, okay, we just went off on a tangent. I had I was going with some more. Um. Yeah. So I didn't watch Terrifier until for the first time, probably February of this year. Okay. okay. So um, guess clowns don't bother me, but when I when he does that smile and the wave, exactly. It me out. That's and, what Megan hates. Yep. Yes. So when we watched it, I didn't think Irene would you know like it because she's not into like the gore like almost like i wouldn't compare it to like um hostile or saw but it's a little bit more gory than what she's used to and yeah. i i didn't think she would like it but she actually liked the movie so um you know i'm excited for the second one. Oh um, yeah i am too i'm pumped for that me too. And then, you know, when I showed her who plays the actor, she was like, oh, he's kind of cute. You yeah, know? Da yeah, David Howard Thorne, he's <laughs> such a down-to-earth guy. He's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I have, yeah. I have got, I got met him back in October. Yeah, I remember at the at the, the, the con you went to, uh, you, you, did, you did photos, and did you do karaoke with him or something, or he no, did karaoke? I didn't sing at all. He did karaoke. Okay. I watched it, but like the cool thing about the here's well, first of all, the cool thing about you know you got the autographs talking to him. Really, the whole cast is really nice. Funny thing is, there's a guy. He's legit terrified of clowns, and you know David Howard Thornton was dressed up as Art the Clown for photo ops, and he's seen how scared the guy was. So what does he do? You guessed it. He went over there and gave him a big hug. And like <laughs> the, guy, the guy was cool, really cool. Like I'm friends of him on Facebook and stuff, but he's another podcaster. And he was like shit like literally shaking in fear, face turned red, tears in his eyes. But he was such an awesome sport about it because like later on that you know, later on that weekend, he made that his his profile picture. And it nice. was just so freaking hilarious. That's awesome. Awesome. And it was just such a all weekend it was a good time, man. And it was just like oh man, I I love that movie by the way. And yeah, I'm gonna rewatch it. And yeah, is, there a, I, is, there, is there a release date for Terrifier Two, or is it still? Like they were projecting October of this year, but I don't. Oh, know. The wow. whole COVID, I think they have. They're gonna push it back too. Is it? They were, it they be... were filming a little bit when the COVID happened, so mm -hmm. they pushed back some some of the scenes. So I know they started filming again. Is it theatrical or gonna be VOD? No, it'll probably be VOD. I don't okay. think I could pick that up. It's just okay. too brutal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so get you know again. I'm thinking in my mind as we're talking. So getting back to your cosplay, like with the images that are scrolling. Um, now, did you do you have experience with like Photoshop or anything? What do you do for your backgrounds? Yeah, I I don't really have experience. I just really like I have a photo app that I use. So I like I I, lo I love editing photos. Like it's just something that I like to do in my downtime. You mm -hmm. know. I have a stressful job that I do. So when I'm in my downtime, that relaxes me. So like, I love just, you know, take like, I, like I'll spend like two hours editing a photo, choosing nice. background, bringing in lighting. And I just really love doing that. Like this whole, yeah. my whole Instagram thing I started, is just like a big hobby that I love to do. And it's like, when I'm out at work, like this is like what I like love to do and put my time and effort into. So I so, would uh, shout and get more like, I really 
to work with a professional photographer mm -hmm. these days and get some professional photos done. But it's, it's, it's all about the networking and how I yeah. came across the photographer that I'm using, which is uh, Jen James of James Photography and Imaging. I met her. Um, I was invited to go to Smithville because um, every year the owner of the store, Underground, does zombie Santa photos. Okay. And um, Jen and her husband um, were the photographers for that. Um, her husband has since passed, so um, she was actually getting to the point where she wasn't, um, she didn't have it in her to do the events anymore. But right. I think, you know, when we met and she saw how much fun it was and how, you know, people were having fun with Jason and Zombie Santa, it kind of sparked a new interest in her and she got that passion back. So, oh, nice. um, you know, we actually talked um, a little bit that night and said, you know, if you ever want to do anything, let me know as far as like, if you want to have an event here, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll do the photography for you. And that's when um, pretty much how our relationship started. And um, man, our first event together was back on March 13th. And obviously that was like the day the, the shit hit the wall with COVID uh -huh. and everything. So our event was only three hours and we had a decent little crap you know, um, that came out and, you know, we had a good time. And then of course, you know, we had, um, we had events actually fundraising photo. We had one fundraising photo event scheduled in April for the museum. Obviously that got canceled. So they rescheduled it to June. Now mind you, these are outside events. Um, that got canceled. So, um, there were two separate events at the same location. So what the, uh, owner of the store is doing is he's combining the events, um, which I had told you about this, Josh. So it's um, September 19th. Yeah. Um, it's a Saturday. It's in uh, the Smithville Art Walk and Rockabilly. So it's big outdoor vendors or local artists. Um, there'll be music. So we're doing a photo fundraiser for the Blairstown Museum. Um, it's not going to be green screen. It'll be professional photos, though. So if Josh and family is able to come or Josh and Megan... They're yeah, gonna, definitely. They're going to hop in costumes to enhance the um, the photo. So the photos were six dollars, and um, half of the each sale of the photo goes towards the museum. So I'm like praying that I can pull. You know, I we can do this. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, Jen and I have done um, uh, two photo sessions so far. We kind of do like one a month, and. Um, she she's new to horror cosplay like she's done like cosplay for other people but not like with the vision i had so this right. is adding this is adding to her portfolio so that's why we partnered up because i said hey how much would you charge me to do a photo session she's like well if i can add it to my portfolio we're just going to do it together i said that's awesome you know thank you yeah um so We've had another event canceled, which would have been a really big event for us with a green screen event. Um, how our free comic book day at the local mall hosted by Level Up Entertainment. Uh, obviously, that was canceled, but they draw up to about a thousand people at this event. It's like a little mini convention. Um, so their next scheduled event is Halloween Comic Fest uh, on Halloween, which is hopefully we'll have it. It's not as big of an event, but it's still fun. And that was the event where I was um, featured. I was first featured as the main guest, you know. So um, the guys at Level Up have been, you know, excellent towards me. And they came to me with an idea they had for my new costume that I will debut um, officially. Like, I'll reveal it. I'm going to reveal it in August. But um, to take pictures with people hopefully will be on Halloween and the nice. green screen backdrop will, you already know what I'm talking about. So the, the image I'm using is associated with the, the style of the costume mm -hmm. without, and uh, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, we'll talk about it off air, but it's going to be awesome. Um, so yeah, it's all about networking, you know, um, yeah. Aaron and I met through, on the his name was Jason um, group page, I believe. Um, okay, I think that's how we originally met. 
and we were talking and he has to you know if i ever been up his way and he's a horror podcaster and he'd love to have me on and probably within a month i was on his show so yeah. um awesome. i used the word networking um that's why i started doing the confessions of a cosplayer because a lot of people helped get my name out so i want to do the same for the fellow cosplayer right. in any way i can so that's why i started the article and i've been doing that since the middle of january and i have enough content going up until maybe the first or second week of september and i actually added a new thing into it where well we're getting into the haunt season so why don't i you know um have haunters that work at haunted attractions um yeah that's you know cool. so i already had one individual james amaral who um actually uh does slasher dot graphics where you can get um you know my shirts um joe gallo shirts camp blood radio shirts um he's a haunter that's what he that's his passion so um other than his main job and everything so because of me um doing his article have you guys seen a documentary? Um, oh gosh, it had the word haunt in it. The Art of the Haunt. Have you guys seen that on Netflix? Um, yeah, if you haven't, have, yeah. if you haven't, watch it um, okay. because it talks about the extreme haunts mostly, like where yeah. they like kidnap, they like sign stuff. waivers, yeah. yeah. But um, it also talks about the traditional haunts and they interview a woman, I forget her name, forgive me, um, but she is very well known in the haunter community. She's been doing it for like 30 plus years, like at Knott's Berry Farm in California and whatnot. She saw the um, cosplay article that I did for the haunter because he had shared it on his page or whatnot. So she shared it on her page. Oh, nice. And so basically, she's like the, oh gosh, I don't want to say, like she's the OG of the haunters, basically, you know, so very well respected. And because of that, I had another guy reach out to me, you know, so it's, I just can't say network, network. So like Josh, you know, um, you know, I don't know what your goal is as far as being a cosplayer, but your ultimate goal is like what you want to do as far as, um, like if you want to be a featured cosplayer, start local. That's okay. my, my, my best advice to you. Start local. So if, if you know any places that do like Halloween events or like, yeah. say, um, like uh, for ex example, I had a, a, uh, a volunteer fire company reach out to me because every year they do, um, it's called Ocean View Trail of Terrors. And it's a fundraising for the firehouse. So they reached out to me um, because they came across me somehow, asked me if I wouldn't mind help them with a the fundraiser. So like that, my friends are in the comic yeah. store, you know, toy store. Um, so start local. Don't think big. Okay. Right, so yeah. first. And then eventually you'll, you'll get somewhere. So now like I'm in a place where with uh, Jen, I can make a little bit of money to help finance buying new stuff um right. you know and so yeah so if you know just you know if you go to an event and you see a photographer start just start talking to them yeah get business cards made up hey sir i finally got business cards so i gotta send you a little bit finally. so yes finally <laughs> nice <laughs> um wild, man. so yeah like it's been a whirlwind for me and the one thing that i did kind of focus a little bit too much on it you know, like I would work, come home, and social media. But you got to remember, you 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 got to separate that and make sure you spend time with your family. That's like another, yeah, thing, yeah. Which I, I'm sure I know you do, and I don't know how you do it, being working full time, married, and having three kids. Like, where do you find the time for yeah, yourself? It's tough. <laughs> yeah. You know, I I just have I just have a fur baby, you know. But uh, yeah, you got to remember, you know. Um, yeah, I remember about your family. Remember, they come first. This is a hobby, but you know that's why I make time that won't interfere with my family time. Yeah, you know, and um, that's what you got to do. Yeah, yeah, and you know, um, always, um, you know, it's great to get advice from everyone. Like Nathan Barker, you know, other than Joe Gallo, Nathan Barker has been really great with plugging me. So because I sh I was sh I just started sharing his stuff. 
So mm-hmm. that, you know, I'm in the Camp Blood Radio family now, you know, as, you know, you start sharing stuff like getting the Keystone. What did you think of the Tropical Keystone? Did you like it? Oh, yeah, I liked it. Yeah, yeah it's it's not I have some bad. in my fridge right now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not bad. It's a good he, he summer beer. I don't know if I could drink yeah. it all year long, but no, it's, no, it's but definitely yeah, good it's on good. a day you're out sweating in the heat, mowing the grass. Pop open a couple. Yeah. Of yeah. Yep. Um, Nathan's great for giving me advice. You know, I'll like ask him something. Like I asked him about how do I get known in the convention scene because you know you do have the the professional cosplayers, but yeah. when you when you look at the overall picture of it, how many of them are male? It's more female. Okay. Yeah. And they they are professional because of what they can display bring to the table yep yep yeah they got the looks and uh yeah and i'm not knocking them for that they're using what they were given you know it's hard for a male cosplayer you know to get to that level oh irene said we gotta start showing our bulges so oh okay so we gotta wear our jason pants tighter (laughs) yes we gotta wear them tighter (laughs) so so depending on where you're doing (laughs) So, yeah, so you, you know, guys, go. You gotta go. <laughs> so it is tougher, you know, in the cosplay world. It is a female dominant. Like not, I'm gonna say dominated, but there's more, from what I've seen, more professional female cosplayer than male cosplayers. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I'm now at a stage where people are asking me to, you know, come out and do an event, you know, which is really cool. Um, so I actually had uh, two invitations one was to uh renew vows in blairstown for the you know if they were going to have a rain date for the 40th and like in september so i said yeah definitely and you know if they said how much do you want that's when i would say oh well money for gas i'm not going to say this is what i want you know they reached right. out to me. So if they want to offer me money, yeah, we'll work something out. But I'm not going to demand. I'm not that. Yeah, demand. I'm it, not yeah. there, and I'm not that guy. Yeah. Um, then I had someone ask me if I could. They're big Friday the 13th fans. Her friend's getting married. Could I crash it after they have the ceremony and the reception? I said, yeah, that's fine. They're local in New Jersey. But because of COVID, they had to postpone their wedding that was scheduled in november until next year so they were going to send me a formal invite (laughs) oh nice Um, that'll be cool yeah so um you know and another thing that i started which you're 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 aware of because we talked about is the fundraising yeah i wanted to use the brand for good as well um you know jason's not that mean of a guy you know so right my first my first fundraiser that i did with the character was for a local animal shelter and um after everything was said and done and i thought about it i was kind of upset that i didn't get a thank you out of them you know while like i only raised like a hundred dollars and you know a box full of donations they didn't say thank you like i yeah the communication i would send them emails giving them updates because i went and you know I reached out to jason brooks and he donated a print that he signed and i was doing raffles and whatnot the fact that they didn't say thank you, they kind of just put a bad taste in my mouth. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I'm, we're doing a fundraiser, hopefully an outdoor actually for monster bash in October for the special Olympics in New Jersey. Um, and then, um, I reached out to a animal farm sanctuary, uh, to see if they would be interested. It's a family. It's a very family friendly, place it's very fun to go to it's like a big petting zoo for farm animals but uh i figured and i sent her a bunch of photos of me with the kids that have been to my events like jason's not that scary you know and i had pictures with animals so i sent i sent a nice proposal letter and i said i now have these awesome connections where i could email an actor and say hey i'm doing this um fundraiser could you donate a autographed print and i'm gonna do an online raffle in my jason group you know so i'm, yeah. I'm hoping she'll get back to me and plus she has a killer barn too so how cool uh, that that'd be, be good for a photo shoot yeah. yes yeah, yeah. yeah so um i'm hoping you know she'll take it in consideration and i'm 
if it does go off, um, I would like to do it in October. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, it's just, um, I think I started out very small, but then once I got to Blairstown for the first time, it was like a whirlwind, you know, yeah. and yeah. It was, it's, it's still going on. It's kind of, you know, I went from here to here. Now it's steady and out. And, you know, with my networking, I've been fortunate enough where now I'm involved in my, I, I don't want to say my project. The project was pitched to me and asked if I wanted to be a part of it. And right. I said, hell yeah. <laughs> so that's my tangent. I kind of went on a ramble. But, uh, you know, I just, I just want to see everyone have fun in the, in the cosplay world. And, yeah. you know, um, as we discussed before, sometimes there's some Debbie Downers that might want to talk trash on you. But the best advice Joe Gallo gave, not so much advice, but what he said to me when we first met, they're only talking trash just because they're jealous of you. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. That, so that there, man, is just. It's one of two things. They're either jealous when it comes to that, you know, the same with people leaving negative comments on stuff, or they just want attention. They want your attention. They want, yeah. Yeah. They want you to say hi to them. And instead of saying, you know, hey, how you doing? Or whatever, or cool video, it's, oh, this sucks. This is corny. This is bullshit. Da, 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 da. And it's like, this, you have, people need to learn how to just ignore it. Yeah. Exactly. So, Josh, with your, your awesome man cave or dad cave, what do you, what do you call it? I call it my man cave. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Savannah's part of it though too, so she's always down here with me. She hangs nice. on here with me. We watch our horror movies and yeah. <laughs> so, what's your favorite like collectible that you have? Is it the art, um, like mannequin, or is it like a, a, a figurine you have? Uh, I would say my. Let me see what would be my favorite collectible. Would probably be. My Halloween 2018 mask. I got like a rehauled one, and I have okay. a slight mannequin bust. That really like was one of my first pieces that when I started collecting, mm -hmm. it always stands out to me. So yeah, I actually got that uh, rehauled by uh, somebody through Instagram. Oh, nice. Okay, I forget his name now, but I don't know if he does them anymore. But he rehauled the tots mask for me, and then I put it on a mannequin bust. So that, that was like one of my first pieces. So I really treasure that one because that's what really got me into creating the man cave and making it horror. And yeah. Nice. Nice journey. Like we just moved in here in 2017. So okay, I visions. I had visions of this down here because I have like a bar on the other side. So that's like my sports area. Okay. That's, yeah, I'm a big Eagles fan. So I have Eagles on that side. And then on this side is my horror side. Okay. That's, yeah. I'm using everything. Uh, yeah. Well, we're going to have some drama because I'm not an Eagles fan. <laughs> uh, Sir is a diehard San Francisco fan. Okay. And um, I, I was raised Dallas. Oh. So. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there, there always has to be that one that messes it up, Josh. No? Yep, I know, I know. <laughs> I'm a product of my time, you know. My mom was a big Roger Stallback fan. She grew up in the area okay. of Roger Stallback, you know. So, well, actually, she didn't grow up. She was already an adult, but she loved Roger Stallback. And uh, I just remember, you know, um, her so happy when they won back to back in '93, '94, and then, you know, ever since then. It was just, you know. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't know what my prize collection really like piece yeah it's tough it's tough to choose yeah. something it really i mean i yeah i don't have anything that really stands out um yet um no i i, I know it's just not yeah yeah not yet actually maybe this for this kind of stands out you guys probably already saw it i'm going to give them a plug so i'm not sure how oh, i don't yeah. have my glasses on but you seen the picture. So, um, yeah. Cemetery Haunts, you can find them on Facebook and Instagram. Um, they make some awesome replica tombstones and, um, they do a full size and then they do like a mini one. So, and the prices are really good. Um, it was really hard to kind of think of which one I wanted to buy. You know, I, I'm a yeah. big, I love, uh, Jason lives. I always love that tombstone. Joe Gallo has one. 
So I'm like, I want to be different. So I got the um, Jason Rising tombstone. Um, and so it looks how it does in the movie. Um, to my knowledge, I'm the first one that posted images of it. Um, so we're, we're bringing it to Blairstown this weekend. Um, so we'll get some pictures and costume with it. And yeah, I'll look cool there at Hope Cemetery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then Dave Brown wants to um, also uh, take some stock footage of it. So nice. I'm not sure if he's going to use it for the new project we're working on or just to have something. But um, I have an idea of taking a picture with it. And what we'll, and what we'll do is um, I have an app that does like lightning and, and thunder, you know. So I think oh, that cool. would be really yeah. cool. Um, it doesn't do the sound effects, so I can add the sound effects in there. Um, but I thought that'd be really cool. Um, and I'm actually going to um, take it. I have a photo shoot scheduled for the 25th of this month, and it's at um, Batstow State Park, which is like South Jersey, uh, 30 minutes from me. And okay. they have an old, 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 old cemetery. I'm talking like tombstones made out of wood, sort of wow. like in, sort of like cool. in, um, uh, Friday 13th Part 5, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, um, I'm gonna put it in that area just so. Is that Savannah right there? Yeah. Hey, you wanna hey, come Hey, Savannah. <laughs> oh, Irene's coming to say hi. Oh, there is Minnie Jason. Aww. Hi. Hey, hi. Hi. <laughs> hi, Savannah. Hi. How are, are you? Um, nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> are you are you excited to uh, hang out together on Saturday? Are you excited? Yeah. 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 I'm excited to see you yeah. and getting getting costume for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we're gonna go to Blairstown. Yeah, next Saturday. Yeah, this Saturday. This Saturday. <laughs> Seth, Michael's gonna be sad. Michael's gonna be sad. Yeah, cause we're gonna left left. Yeah, we're gonna leave him alone. Dad, <laughs> Dad, look at Jason's phone. <laughs> so You're not allowed to do that. You're gonna be bad. Are you excited to see them this Saturday? We're gonna dress up. Are you? Yeah. Yep. Take some okay. pictures. Yeah. yeah. All, right. All right. We can add them to your wall, right? Yeah. We can add them to your collection. Why do you have Jason on there? Like that one. Yeah, he has the Cam Crystal Lake sign too. See the sign? Mm -hmm. That's right. All the cool kids do. Yep. Yeah. So for I the think so. I'm gonna fall. Okay, here I'll put you down. So for the uh, viewers of the podcast, um, <laughs> I I, uh, I did a uh, article for Father's Day and featured both Josh and Savannah. I thought that was <laughs> a really we timed it out really good, so it was awesome. So maybe Mother's oh. Day, maybe maybe we can get Megan to do something. You know, yeah. maybe she can cosplay as a final girl. <laughs> yeah, and then do a Mother's Day special. Or so, or Josh or, can dress up as a woman if he wants to. He could be a final girl. Too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how I would look as a woman. I don't know. <laughs> I, I think of. Um, have you ever seen the movie? Um, it's a early 90s with, with Emilio Estevez where they spoofed um, Lethal Weapon. It was called Loaded Weapon. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, what is his name? Forgive me. Um, that played um, uh, Pennywise. Tim Curry. Oh, and yeah. He's a Girl Scout, but he still has his beard. And he's like, you know, wilderness girls. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, let's get back to the tombstone. So, I'm going to put it in the area of the cemetery where you can't see the names of the tombstones because I don't want to be disrespectful. Um, right. But yeah, Dave Brown showed me the wooden tombstones. I'm like, oh, dude, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. So the model that I, you know, I use Rebecca Sin, um, I had asked her, do you have a, like a summer dress? Because I, I have a vision and I'm kind of playing off a of bride of Chucky with the obsession of Chucky, you know? Um, okay. I want her to kind of, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna buy like fake black roses off of Amazon, and she's gonna come visit Jason's tombstone. And what I want Jen to do is have her take a picture of her embracing the tombstone from behind, so you'll see like Jason Voorhees. Um, and then I almost like want to do a video and put like Living Dead Girl with Brad and Chucky, but I don't want to take that idea. It just you know came to me. But yeah, that's uh, pretty neat. Yeah, that'd be cool. 
what I want to do is um, when, you know, I don't think I want to kind of do a carry movement from the original carry when the hand comes up at the, at the, uh, when she visits the grave. So um, Jen's really good at Photoshop. When I released a photo of me in the lake, I had a few people ask me, how did you get in the water without ruining your costume? Yeah, that was a cool shot. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, no, that's Photoshop. You know, Jen did a great job. Yeah. Um, so what I want to do is have her take a picture of like my arm up to my elbow and just Photoshop it, like coming out of the ground in front of the tombstone, you know? Yeah, that'd be nice. That'd be, yeah, really cool. Yeah. So yeah, we got that scheduled for the 25th. Um, and then next month, I uh, am doing the video reveal for my new costume. And then we're doing like kind of like a late evening, early night shoot for that costume as well. And we're going to involve nice. kids. So the one girl that who's the mother of the little boy I was picking up, uh, yeah. I think she has a nice big field at her house that we can put a tent and you know whatnot. So um, yeah, so Cemetery Haunts, um, they do custom tombstones. So if you have an idea of what you want, um, she'll put it together for you. But she has an awesome catalog of different tombstones. And yeah, the, I've the, seen. Yeah, she does the, have nice work. Yeah, the material is it's like a hard styrofoam, you know, thick. Yeah, and um, she, it does come with um, uh, plastic cylinders, so. Um, it does stand up really well by itself, but if you're outside, you just maybe want to put like lawn stakes in there and just put them in. So if it's windy, it doesn't blow it over. Right. Um, but the price is really good. Shipping was, um, you know, um, the shipping was um, good for the current situation we're in. And then she did follow up with me and asked me how it was because I know I if if I liked it, she was very nervous. I'm like, what are you being nervous about? Your your yeah, work, yeah. Your work speaks for itself. Um, and then I got three more things. Nathan Barker was actually um, helpful in acquiring three signatures from Friday the 13th Part 3 that they're very rare convention goers. So um, I got Chuck. See, I, I, I got to put my glasses on. Where are my glasses? Because I can't see. The, the OG Jason needs his bifocals. <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa, so, <laughs> so got a glare here, but we got Chuck David Cato. Oh yeah, yeah I see him. Name. Yeah, nice. I just got I just got the frames for him, so I'm going to put them up tonight. Um, then we have uh, Dana Kimmel. You can't really see. Okay, so I got that one. And we have uh, Catherine oh, Park. Nice, yeah, that's a good shot. Yeah. Yeah, Barrel, so, yeah. Um, yeah, I got a good deal on him. Um, you know, he um, reached out to me and said if I'd be interested because the guy that, you know, I guess he does private signings, you know, and uh, acquired them. He had, you know, had a whole bunch to, to, to for anyone who was interested. Um, so I can't wait to add them. And actually, um, if anyone is interested, like Josh, if you're interested, but uh, the guy who played, I can't, forgive me because I don't remember his name, but... Um, he played the sheriff in part two. They got the hammer to the head. Um, he's oh, having okay. Some, he's having some health issues, so um, he's doing. Uh, there's going to be a private signing um, for anyone that wants his autograph. It's uh, it'll be thirty eight dollars total with shipping, and it comes in a secured, um, you know, envelope. And there's like four or five different images that you can choose from. So oh, I'm, nice. I'm I'm going to buy one because again. You know, um, he's a lesser known character, doesn't go to cons, but, you know, this again is the Friday the 13th community looking out yeah. you know, for fellow actors or whatever. So, um, yeah, I'm going to probably order it before we leave tomorrow. Um, oh, but nice. yeah, that's my newest acquisitions. So, um, uh, fan film. So, um, for those that <clears throat> don't know, we got Never Hike in the Snow coming out soon. Yes, and yeah. Josh and I are in a cosplay um, group chat that I created because there was a challenge going around. Um, I think it was uh, Tony.Ray, if I got his name right, um, had asked me if I can get some cosplayers together because there was a Michael Myers challenge. Where a oh, the trophy, yep. 
Yeah, the trophy challenge where yeah. Michael Myers cosplayers were holding up like a hockey mask. So there wasn't a lot of them. So I said, yeah, I'll, we'll, we'll put something together. And, you know, I created two separate uh, mes chat messages because you can only have so many. And, and the uh, group, the main group that we're in, basically supplied all the photos. And I think we won that challenge. I didn't have yeah. to really do anything. But um, Vince DeSanti, I had added him. And uh, every once in a while, he'll share an image or something. But it was really cool. We were talking this off air. Mm -hmm. For about a half an hour to 45 minutes, he was talking to everyone in the, the message board and he was uh, giving some insight and, you know, answering some questions without giving too much away, um, you know, so it's really cool to see to see that, yeah. uh, you know, I mix. He said there's going to be a, a, an upgrade uh, to Ghost Jason, whether it's the Hawk or something. And I said, don't be, don't be, uh, Uber, uh, <laughs> Uber ghost. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, and you know, deputy Rick is going to be, um, what did he say? He was going to be, uh, less stressed or more stressed. I forget what he said. Um, cause, or, or patience. I forget. I forget. Honestly, I forget what he said, but, um, you know, I'm excited for it. They're doing post-production. There's not a release date yet. But um, hopefully there will be a release date for Jason Rising. Um, they but weren't they November, weren't they scheduled that for November? Yeah. November thirteenth. Um, again, that's due to COVID issues. Yeah. So, um, but who knows? I think James. I mean, James Sweet. You know, uh, Vince DeSanti is also behind this. He helped James along with like the script and everything. Gave him guidance. So we're going to get a damn good fan film. Um, yeah, that looks I mean, it looks like it's going to be badass. Yeah, uh, Aaron, did you see the um, like the three minute? Uh, did I send you that the three minute like intro to Jason Risen? Honestly, I do not. Re I don't remember. All <laughs> right, I to send I'll it to I'll send it to you. Oh, man, it was it was awesome. Yeah, like, it was a cool. Yeah. Yeah, the backers got to see it before he released it officially, and it, it was really good because I believe like that scene takes place shortly after part four, and then it's going to time jump like 30, 40 years or whatever. So, but just with that three minute scene, I felt like it's up there with the quality of Never Hike Alone. Let's put it that yeah, way. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and I actually went back and re listen to when james was on camp blood radio um you know and, and listen more um like just really listen to all the details and stuff he was looking for so uh speaking of fan films i can give everyone an update on his name was jason mm -hmm. um just like any other fan film um they were put on hiatus because of covid but i am happy to say that dave brown and crew will be resuming filming in Blairstown, New Jersey, uh, the middle to end of um, August. I think it's oh, like nice. uh, the 20th to the 24th. And um, they are filming at two, actually three locations. Um, one is a location used in Friday the 13th, because Dave is all about um, paying homage to the forefathers, you know? Right. Uh, that's why, like, when we really got to talk, like, he came down two weeks ago, and I spent a whole day with him because we were scouting locations for another film. We really got to seriously talk about his film, and if you honestly think about it, this could be a placeholder in between part one and part two. Like, if you wanted to have a Friday the 13th marathon, you could put his fan film right in between part one and part two. Um, so he's filming at a location that was used in the original, um, he's filming at a location that was used for um, when the, the, the cast and crew, um, that's where they stayed. There's a, uh, there's a restaurant and a, a lodge behind it. So um, he's filming uh, scenes there. And he had to, he had some casting changes. Um, so he has to reshoot the, a barn scene, which was a pretty good scene in his film. Um, reason he had to recast it was or reshoot it was because two of the actors he had to recast. So, with the help of the wonderful Jeanette Ayurado, 
he was able to um, get a barn that pretty much looks like the barn from part three. So oh, yeah, cool. so it's like only it's in Blairstown, and the individual that owns it um, is not charging him anything for using the location, which is really cool. Awesome. Wow. So um, as far as uh, release date, he's looking probably at um, springtime. So okay. um, the one thing that you know kind of sucks is he's all about continuity because any good. Uh, fan of the franchise knows the movies don't have continuity um but because of the season aspect of it you know the last time they shot was in march of our uh, no uh, um february uh, early march of this year i believe um no i'm sorry the fall of last fall so it was short it was uh like october november of last year so mm. obviously he's shooting in the summertime now so he's, you know, that's the one thing that's kind of killing him, but he, he wants to get this done. But like, you know, if you think about Friday the 13th, in the end scene when Alice is on the canoe, it was like late September, the leaves were turning, you know? Yeah. I never, when I first started watching Friday the 13th, I never really picked up on that. Not until I got older and I started studying the film. Yeah. So... I'm um, happy to say, because, you know, as you guys know, I've been a big backer of His Name is Jason because uh, I love, love the sack and the fan films really, they don't have the sack, you know? So it's cool that Dave's bringing, as he says, we're bringing the sack back. Um, so there's another fan film that um, it was just uh, came out of kind of like, not nowhere, but Dave had always played with this idea for a while. So he wanted to do something in case his name was Jason couldn't resume when he wanted to was to do something to give the backers of his film something to hold them over until he resumed filming. And then shortly after he sent me the script, you know, he had a meeting with the cast and crew and they, you know, started resuming his name was Jason. So we're working on this in between him doing Jason and us working our nine to five jobs. So um, the title of this film is called Seasons of the Huntsman. And so the whole premise is we're taking the character of Jason, the backstory of Mrs. Voorhees, but it's going to be like in its own universe, sort of like Marvel or DC Comics. Okay. So the reason we titled it Seasons of the Huntsman is uh, he's like the boogeyman in the woods. It's taboo to say Jason Voorhees. Okay. Uh, the townsfolk know what happened, but they don't talk about it. It's like the it's a it's a it's, it's not a secret, but they just don't talk about it. And right. it's gonna it's gonna span forty years, so it'll be as early as nineteen seventy five, and then forty years after that. And the how it goes seasons is basically each story is going to be a 30 minute episode for the season so right now we're filming the summer season it'll take place in 1984 um dave came down two weeks ago i showed him two locations that i scouted out and each had their own quality he's like let me let's let's go out to um this this place on a whim i've never been there he's from the area and it was like this is what we needed. It had everything of the first two and it had the isolation from people, you know, which is, which is what we're looking for. Cause we don't want to be interrupted from the cars and whatnot. It's on a river that, you know, has tubers and kayakers. So obviously we'll have to, you know, just stop rolling footage um, when they come down. So we did some stock footage at the first two locations, which he blended in, took a little teaser that he created. Um, he got into costume, and we, we shot some footage um, with his the weapon that he's going to be using. Um, so there's going to be a total of two scenes in this episode. One will be in Blairstown, New Jersey, and then the, the other scene will be at the location that we, we had found. And so we have a total of four, five actors in this film. 
So each episode is going to have a narrator, like an old timer, sort of like um, Tales from the Crypt. It's going to open up with an old timer talking about, um, you know, um, what happened during this this generation. We Dave hasn't fine really fine tuned that out, like how we're going to introduce him. I had my idea. He has his ideas, and I think we're just going to come together with it. But it's really cool to have an old timer talking about the stories, you know. Um, so we're going to have, yeah, a total of one, two, three, five actors for the first one. Um, so this is all self-funded. So we start filming Sunday and then we have to just decide on two, two days next month for the other scene. And then, you know, we're going to, uh, edit it all together to hopefully have it done by the end of the summer, beginning of September to be on YouTube. And nice. if, if we get a good reception, um, we will move forward with it. We're going to move forward with it anyway, but we want to see what the reception is because the springtime episode is going to take place at night. So we would need money for renting like generators for the lights. Yeah. So if we get a good reception out of summer, we're going to do a small crowdfunding just to pay for the, um, like the generators. Um, you know, and, um, the people that we talked about, like Dave's going to be doing a lot of the, um, directing himself. Um, this is be his first time being behind the camera and he's really good. He's really good. I've learned a lot of things from him so far. So if everything goes well with him behind the camera, when he's on screen, I'm going to be the cameraman. When he's off screen, he's the cameraman. So, um, if everything goes well with how we shoot, summer um he will continue being a, the cameraman for the others but he has reached out to other individuals to see if they are interested um so obviously um i'm not sure when fall what year fall would take place uh winter would be in the early 90s and we're gonna have snow and a snowmobile um and springtime takes place in 1975 and i do know we're going to see jason a young jason and he, he's not going to have a sack you're just going to see his face so oh, this nice. will be this will, this will be, be cool first. yeah and the um the look of the hockey mask is awesome you know um i'll have to get the name he told me the name i've heard of the name i just it's just not coming to me and i asked him how much he charged and when he told me i'm like are you serious that's cheaper than my my uh, my my custom part six, you know. So it's it's very yeah. detailed, you know. It's almost like it fits the whole front of the head and the back is awesome and it's it got a really cool look. It kind of reminds you of like the part five poster per se, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. So, but you know, it looks like the coloring is kind of like the ghost hot coloring, you know, with a darker red uh, chevron. So. Um, I'm very fortunate, um, to be a part of this. Like, uh, it was an honor for Dave to ask me because I've known Dave for almost two years now. And, um, I haven't, I don't know what my title is yet. Like scouting location. Like, so scout, um, scout, well, not a scout master, that's Boy Scouts. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, casting agent. Um, Irene is craft services and in the movie industry craft services deals with um special effects and other things but when i think of craft services i think of like craft macaroni and cheese so um you know we already had um like uh you know dave came down and after he came down he uh hung out with me and irene irene made an awesome dinner you know so um yeah i'm, I'm really excited and you know vince um congratulations Related me for having been a part of a project so which that's awesome you know and i'll say it i said it before i said it last night and i'll say it again once this damn lawsuit is over vince needs to be given a shot of either writing yeah. the film or directing or both yeah know? i agree on that yeah yeah um, i mean it's cool that tiny mclaughlin wants to do a you know a follow-up to part six but, you know, I got to go with Vince right now. 
You know, Tom's a great guy. Part six is great, but give it to fresh young blood, you know? So that's all I have to say about that. Um, all right. My ramble is over. I think we had a good, uh, as always, Aaron, um, we've been talking for two and a half hours, but recording for an hour and a half. So <laughs> every single time, man, every single time. That's what happens. That's what happens. And it's like, we'll start talking for hours. And the funny thing we'll do too, and I'll keep this short and sweet so we can, you know, wrap up and all that. But the funny thing we'll do too, especially with me and Fat on, is we'll talk for like an hour about a movie that we're getting ready, about the Friday the 13th, we're getting ready to review. <laughs> And then say, you know what, we should just save this for the podcast. But then keep talking about it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, we have the course. Yeah. But yeah, it was, it was a, this was a fun episode, though. And it's cool, like, what you're doing for other cosplayers as far as, you know, what you, how you have the blog and stuff like that. I think that's an awesome thing. And I also think it's cool how me and you are connected and we're like, hey, let, let's bring them on here so they can get yeah. a, little more, a little bit more shine. You get to hear yeah. their voices and all that. And I do that just in general, as far as, as you know, for indie films, as far as people want to come on here and talk about their indie projects. I do it with other horror fans. If they just want to come on here and talk some horror and review a movie with me. And even other podcasters and stuff. Like, I'm not one of those who's like, who feels everybody's a, a, a competition, so to speak. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll say podcast. Like, everybody's, I'm just like, no, if I grow, you can grow and so on and so forth and just kind of have a great time with this show and talking horror which we all love at the end of the day i mean all right it's really not that hard there is some people out there who you know they don't want you for example like you know how i work with my group anything and everything horror related you can post it in the group Mm -hmm. a lot of people don't like that including their own including your own projects is what i mean like a lot of people don't like that you want to keep it like you know, memes and pictures and stuff about movies. I'm like, if it, if it has to do with horror, it's fine. As long as it's not, nope, none of the political bullshit, none of the, you know, none of that stuff, no bullying and all that bullshit. And my group, if I haven't had any issues, one, and then two, as far as like selling things, I haven't made it known really, but it is allowed in my group. Like say, if you have an item, hey, I want to sell this. But my thing is, I'm not in the middle of it. Everybody here, and here's adults. So say you want to sell whatever, Friday the 13th, whatever, and you sell it in the group and you screw somebody over, that don't hit me up. I, the mm -hmm. most I'll do is if somebody screws somebody over, it's kick them out of the group. Yeah. But I'm not getting in the middle of adults' issues. <laughs> I'm not doing that. The most, like I said, the mm -hmm. most I kick them out of the group, ban them from the group. But I'm not getting in the middle of adults' issues because, you know, we're all adults here and I'm not babysitting. Right. But yeah, man, this every single time we record, it's a long ass episode. It's a long ass conversation before and after and during the episode. It, but it's always fun. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, it's good. I uh, guess you know, like uh, you know, Josh and I have been wanting to get together for the longest time. You know, um, mm -hmm. we couldn't go to his daughter's birthday, Savannah, because of COVID. So we did like a ver uh, video birthday. And, uh, you know, he doesn't live too far. Well, it's like three and a half hours from me. And it's so weird that you're so close to Blairstown, but you're like yeah. three hours away from me. It's like, it's Blairstown. Um, yeah, we're like 45 minutes from Blairstown. Uh, I'd be up there every weekend, man. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So it's like, you know, it's, it's great that we had to do this tonight. We're going to have yeah. Saturday. And yeah, then, we're looking you know, forward to it. Yeah, and you know, um, it's great that you know it's great to have you on the the podcast because uh, you're pretty much still fresh in the um, my uh, my recent article, and yeah, you know, eventually, you know, as time allows, I'm gonna have more and more. It's just I've been, I I think I've done like thir gosh, it's been like thirty weeks, no, not thirty, gosh, but February. I can't do math. It's up there. A lot of five cosplayers I've probably done so far, something like that. So eventually we'll get to them all, you know, and I'm not going in any particular order, but I figured Josh and I have been wanting to see each other for so long. Let's have yeah. them on the show. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it. It's fun. Yeah. And, you know, I got to get you on here again, Josh. We can yeah, definitely. We could do some movie reviews if you ever want to hit me up. But... I, would, I would love, I would love to be, to listen to your review of zombies part two. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do it. <laughs> I'm down. I'm down. I'm, oh yeah, that's gonna get bashed, and I'm. 
ashamed of that at all. But um, give um, Jersey, give uh, Josh my contact information and stuff. And we'll yeah, he's not he's not on Facebook, and you're not on Instagram. Email. <laughs> yeah, email, yeah, yeah, I have your email, yeah. yeah. Which I yeah. announced the email at the end of the episode anyway. But yeah, the email and stuff, and we can chat through there, and then yeah, definitely. Days. But um, if you guys have anything you want to plug, now's the time. Go ahead and plug plug away. If you want to do a couple shout outs, go ahead and do that. And Josh, if you want to plug your social media. Yeah, um, yeah, my social media. I'm on uh, IG. I'm at Horror Daddy eighty five. Uh, Savannah's at Mini Jason thirteen on Instagram, so she has her own page. I also forgot to mention uh, when we were talking about my uh, cosplay, I forgot to give a shout out to uh, Brandon Scott Murphy. He actually mm -hmm. for um for my new hood for my part eight. So yeah, I forgot to shout out him. So yeah, he does an awesome job, and uh, you'll get to see it uh, on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, so it's a nice hood. So yeah, awesome. yeah. So I got those Instagram. So yeah, yeah. So um, you know, I'm on Facebook and. Uh, Instagram, South Jersey Jason, and of course, you know, I want to shout out Blairstown Museum. Um, we got, uh, his name is Jason, and uh, Seasons of the Huntsman is a fan film. So, um, I'm a little bit involved more with his name is Jason, um, social media aspect, so, um, you know, uh, Dave asked me if I wanted to do that, I said I'd be more an honor to. Um, obviously, um, I didn't, we really didn't talk about my costumes that much, but obviously I want to uh, shout out James ingram of j3 jason costumes who is my sponsor so um yeah, you know, he's been he's been working really hard on my new costume for next month and um he's working hard on a lot of stuff he's got a lot of cool things he's announcing uh pretty soon he is going to be doing a giveaway for a complete part seven costume i don't wow. know about the hockey cool. mask but everything else the hood the um the compression uh bones i think it might come with the compression suit the dickies that go for it the gloves the screen accurate chain that nathan barker always busts my balls for i am getting them <laughs> nathan um so yes um if you're looking to get in cosplay and not hit not bust the wallet check out james ingram that's, um, that's cool. on give away. facebook and instagram um j3 jason costumes he will be having t-shirts that you can purchase on slasher.graphics uh soon uh, mm -hmm. I've been talking to James Amaral. He's just been busy with work. He's been having some vending issues with the, the vendors. So he doesn't want to put it up until he gets that resolved. Um, yeah, and, and obviously, um, also, a uh, new person that um, I had made my new hockey mask for uh, my new costume is um, Jen from Lipstick Legion. She is uh, local to the New Jersey area. And she does really good work um, for hockey masks. And also she does rehauls for um, like Michael Myers mask. So if you're looking for to try someone new, you can follow her on Facebook and Instagram at Lipstick Legion. And that's all I got. Awesome. Awesome. Well, listeners, go follow these guys. They have a lot of cool, cool things. Awesome cosplayers, awesome guys. So definitely go give them a follow on Facebook and Instagram and wherever else they are. Follow them in person too. South Jersey Jason loves that. <laughs> um, and as far as me, I have a Facebook group, Horror Research 30. Feel free to share anything and everything horror related, including your own projects, cosplays, podcasts. As long as it's horror, it's cool. I have a Horror Research 30 page. That's strictly for the podcast. Give you guys updates like when stuff is back to, you know, when we go to cons again. I can tell you guys what cons I'm going to. Where you know, when I have a table and all that fun stuff, come come to the table and record with me. And that's where I'm dropping all my podcasts as well. As as far as when I post them onto Facebook, I'm gonna start posting them just on the page. So go show the page some love, give that a like. You can watch my you can watch this video and many other videos for Research Thirty on YouTube. You can listen to this on audio. On um, I guess you could do it on YouTube too if you wanted, but uh, YouTube. Spotify, iTunes, Podbean, Google Play, and anywhere else podcasts are played. You can listen to it. You can see me some of my old footage on Twitch as far as streaming, gaming. I'm going to get back into it eventually. It's horror underscore with underscore sir underscore 30. And then for those of you who would like to be a guest on the show, 
come on as far as, you know, for an interview like these gentlemen or review a movie, whatever the case may be, horror related, shoot me an email. It's horrorwithsert.30 at gmail.com. Again, that's horrorwithsert.30 at gmail.com. And I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. Follow us all. We're all some awesome people. And <clears throat> again, guys, thank you so much for coming on. I had a good time. No, well, thank you for having us. Thank Anytime. you. Anytime. And as always, I'll see.